your brief meeting business. Uh, you can see on the screen the proposed agenda for our meeting. Uh, this was previously, previously sent to PCOs and members. Is there any discussion on the agenda? Any discussion on the agenda? May I have a motion to adopt the agenda. I will. Uh, this is Ann Martin. I will move to adopt. Ann Martin has moved to adopt. Are there any objections to the adoption of the agenda? Hearing no objections, the motion passes by unanimous consent and the agenda is adopted. Thank you. Um, this screen shows the meeting minutes for our May 10th meeting. The minutes were previously sent to PCOs and members. Are there any corrections to the minutes? May I have a motion, please? This is Ann Martin. I will move to approve the minutes. Ann Martin has moved to approve the minutes. Are there any objections to the adoption of the minutes to the May 10th meeting? Any obje objections? Hearing no objections, the motion passes by unanimous consent and the minutes are adopted. I'm now gonna briefly share our budget report for May. Um, so our beginning balance was $17,855.20. Our income was $5,635.50. Our expenses were $1,221.24. And our month end balance was $22,269.46. So we are have resources that we are using for our candidates. Our current membership is 317, including PCOs. Any questions about the financials? Okay, we will file these financials. I'm now gonna turn things over to our, our first vice chair, Rachel Glass, to share our land acknowledgement. Rachel. Thank you, Graham. <clears throat> On behalf of the 34th LD Democrats, I acknowledge the land on which we stand today as the traditional home of the Coast Salish and Duwamish people, the traditional home of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, Snoqualmie, Puyallup, and Muckleshoot nations. Without them, we would not have access to this gathering or to this dialogue. I ask that we take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land on which we live and work who are still here. As part of the 34th Dems commitment to walking the walk of taking action that goes beyond simply a verbal land acknowledgement, we are offering ways that you can take action with us by donating to organizations that benefit indigenous communities in our district and across the country. I will put uh, the links in the chat so that you have a chance to uh, look over the site and please consider your donation to be a way to solidify your commitment to the advocacy of our indigenous neighbors. Um, Tonight's organization that I am highlighting is the American Indian College Fund. I am going to put the link to the chat uh, link to that website in the chat. I, I hope that you will consider making a donation as a way to firm up your commitment to our uh, indigenous neighbors everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Really appreciate that. Okay. Um, now we're going to move forward with our endorsement process, and I'm going to start by sharing our, our rules. First, I want to start with just a reminder that everyone is expected to be kind and respectful during this meeting. The 34th District Democrats have a code of conduct, which is uh, provided on our website, um, and we are all expected to abide by it. You're expected to treat everyone with dignity, respect, and worth use welcoming and inclusive language, assume good intent on the part of speakers and participants. And this is especially true for anyone who chooses to and is recognized by the chair to speak this evening. If you are feeling yourself getting a bit heated um, and ready to do something that is perhaps not very productive or helpful uh, for yourself or your candidate, I encourage you to step away and do whatever you need to do in order to make yourself feel better. Take a breath. You're responsible for yourself. 
Additionally, this is an all volunteer operation and I ask all of us to be patient. I have tremendous gratitude for everyone who has dedicated their time and effort to making this successful. Preparing for tonight has meant that our volunteers have decided to spend hours away from their families and take time away from their paying jobs. And this is no small undertaking. Uh, we are all relying on, we are also all relying on technology functioning properly this evening. We've already had some glitches uh, with our uh, connections, but we have some backups in case that continues to occur. Uh, but we wanna be sure that we offer this in the most accessible format possible. So let's all send positive vibes that the technology continues to function as it should. Uh, now let's review the process that we will ensure, uh, th that we'll follow to ensure our, our endorsement process goes smoothly. This is all described in our bylaws and rules. So nothing is new um, and we have to be sure that we consistently apply them with no exception. Um, in order to be considered for endorsement, a candidate has to meet two criteria. Uh, they are declared Democrat. Uh, they've completed and they've completed the King County Democrats questionnaire, and we provided those questionnaires uh, to members this past weekend. Now I'm going to review uh, more details and rules about this process. And um, frankly, if you are not intending to speak, um, the, you can only you only need to pay attention to the voting rules. But some of you are planning to speak, so I will be sure to go through all of them. Um, precinct committee officers and eligible voting members can speak, make, and second motions and vote. The deadline to be an eligible voting member, uh, if you are a new member who has uh, who has not been a member before or not been a member in the last year, was May 9th. Um, if you were renewing from last calendar year, the deadline was yesterday, June 13th, to renew your membership. Additionally, you have to reside in the 34th district. We have validated all addresses of all folks that are on our membership rolls to ensure that they are eligible. Um, and our tally committee will be using that validated list uh, to check ballots and make sure that only eligible votes are counted. Uh, for each uh, position that we are considering for endorsements, we're gonna go through those one at a time. So we will only consider motions for the particular position that is up for consideration. The chair, I, the chair, will open the floor for motions to endorse. Eligible voters may make motions and seconds for candidates to endorse. Uh, some candidates have already indicated to me who they want to make a motion and second, uh, so that I know to call on those particular folks. Uh, an example, if you are making a motion, you may want to write this down. You simply have to say, I motion the endorsement of candidate or whatever position it is. If you're seconding, all you have to do is say, I second that. Uh, I will take all motions for the position uh, while we are on that particular position. Once uh, I will, once I know that all eligible candidates have been, uh, the motions been made for them or no one has continued to make motions, I will close the motions. Uh, I will then ask for speeches in the order in which motions were made. So if, uh, if Joe Biden was the first candidate to be a motion was made for him, I will call on whoever made that motion for Joe Biden. That person will then have two minutes uh, to speak for his or her motion. Um, they can also yield some or part of their time to the candidate or another eligible member. I will also ask then, once that speech is over, if there's a speech against the motion, uh, that'll be a two minute speech. If no one rises to speak against the motion, there is not a second for speech. However, if someone does speak against the motion or the candidate, the person who seconded the motion for the candidate can speak or yield their time to another eligible voter. Important difference, they, can, they cannot yield their time to the candidate. We will hear up to two for speeches and two against speeches. If you are making against speech, keep in mind, your speech is out of order if you are not speaking about the particular candidate for which we are talking about. So you cannot spend two seconds saying, I don't want this candidate and I want the other candidate. That's not how that's gonna work and you will be cut off. All speeches, once all speeches are completed, we will vote. 
And I see, uh, Steve, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, I'd just like to ask people who second, especially, uh, to identify themselves for the record. Thank you. Yes, so Steve is our secretary and will be recording uh, for the minutes who has made motions and who has seconded. Okay, here's how the balloting works. So once all the speeches are done, we get to voting. Uh, there will be a, always be a first ballot, um, whether it's one, two, or two or more candidates. So all candidates, in order to win on the first ballot, a candidate has to get 60% of the vote on the first ballot. If there's only one candidate, we will only have one ballot. The result will either be that candidate got 60% of the vote or there's no winner and no one is endorsed. If there are two candidates, uh, they will both be on the ballot, the first ballot, and there will also be an option for no endorsement. If no one wins 60% in that situation, we will then allow for a motion to consider a dual endorsement. In order to consider a dual endorsement, someone has to make a motion and someone has to second it. If the second, uh, so then we will go to another ballot for dual endorsement. That is a simple yes or no. Yes, I want a dual endorsement. No, I do not. Requires 60% majority vote for that to occur, for a dual endorsement to happen. Okay, if there are two or more candidates, we will do the first ballot. If no candidate gets 60%, we will take the top two vote getters. They will then move on to the second ballot. There will be no option for no endorsement. You will vote either for those two candidates. If none of those, if neither of those candidates get 60%, we will then consider a motion for dual endorsement for those candidates. Okay, here are the too long didn't read tips. Uh, to make a motion, uh, and there's some new tips here too. To make a motion, you can use your Zoom hand to signal to the chair, just like Steve just did. Uh, candidates may have asked, again, for a specific person to make and second their motion for endorsement. Motions for sole endorsements are out of order. We do not consider that a motion. Dual endorsements can only be considered after the first or second ballots, depending on the number of candidates. All speeches are two minutes. In fact, voting is also two minutes. So when we're timing things, that's two minutes. That's all you need to know. Uh, if you're speaking against a motion endorsed, you may not speak for another candidate that is out of order. Each vote will be, again, two minutes, and it's your responsibility to vote during that window. If you missed it, we're not moving backwards. You can only chat with the host. Um, so we do not have the chat open for everyone, and I'm not monitoring the chat. I don't, I don't have the ability to do that. Um, so if you want to chat, make sure you know that it is something you absolutely have to ask or need to know. Do not, please do not spend time chit-chatting with the co-hosts. They have to be able to prioritize what is important. And if folks are having issues, sure, go ahead and chat with them, but, uh, but be sure that is something you absolutely have to communicate with them about. If you wanna raise a point of order and get my attention, you can raise your Zoom thumbs up to signal to the chair. Um, and then Leah Griffin and Chris Porter are the co-hosts who are available. They're our help desk for this evening. So again, if you have an issue, reach out to Leah Griffin and Chris Porter and they'll be our help desk. Um, and if they wanna raise a point of order to me and get my attention, they can do that as well. Okay, if you are unable to vote using the Zoom ballot or Zoom poll, and I know some folks are uh, perhaps sharing a computer or sharing an account, and so you can't both vote on the same account or same Zoom window, um, you have an option. You can vote via text to our external vote manager at 360-708-4750. This phone number will be available on every single uh, slide that pre uh, precedes this one, but just if you want to write that down, it is 360-708-4750. Include your first and last name as is in your membership and your vote. If you don't provide your name, we can't validate your vote, so it won't be counted. Um, and then please uh, do not vote on Zoom and also text your vote. We won't be counting it twice. Uh, alt again, alternative votes will also be checked against our membership list. Okay, we're ready. Are we ready? I think we're ready. <laughs> um, 
so much. So we're going to now consider our polar block. So what is echoing inside of my ears? Um, we'll start with our board block recommendation from our executive board. As a point of information, we only consider we only endorse candidates who have no Democrat challenger or candidates who are running unopposed. As per our endorsement rules, if any member rises in opposition to any of these candidates, they will be removed from the block immediately, and we will need to more slowly consider them one at a time. So that'll lengthen our night if you want to remove someone from the block. Okay, so here is our block for consideration. Unlike the other votes, which I just reviewed, this vote only requires a simple majority to approve an endorsement of the block. Our block includes King County Superior Court Judge Position 30, Corrine Wilson, King County Superior Court Judge Position 39, Joe Campania, and King County Assessor John Wilson. Are there any objections, opposition to the block before I move for a motion? Any opposition? Thank you. Could I ask a member of the board to please make a motion to endorse the block vote? Uh, so moved. This, uh, this, this. And I recognize the chair, recognize Ann Martin. Thank you. Um, I rise or sit to uh, move the endorsement of uh, the block as recommended the due pass from the board. Is there a second? Chris Porter, um, second. Chris Porter is seconded. All right, Anne, having made the motion, would you like to speak to your motion? You have two minutes. I'm going to keep it short because we have a very long meeting. Uh, as Graham has described, this um, group of candidates meets the requirement of uh, not uh, being having a opposition or in the case of uh, the um, uh, yeah, of uh, Mr. Wilson uh, being a Democrat. So um, please vote for this block. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak in opposition against the block? Anyone like to speak against the block? Okay, we are ready for our first poll. I've opened this up for you. I will leave it up for two minutes. Anyone using the alternative voting method, please text your vote to Graham, you're on mute, Graham. Uh, okay, they're having a problem. Danny, okay. What I'm do you want me to do? I want you to stop fussing. I want to get out of that. You said to get out No, of I'm just saying don't do it again. I just want to see something. 
I don't know what's going on. Okay, 30 seconds left to vote. Okay, the vote is now closed. It has passed 98 to 2%. So our block vote has been endorsed. I see a hand up from Judy Tavel. Judy? I recognize Judy if you have a question. Okay, I'm gonna lower the hand. Okay, we are gonna now move to the Port of Seattle commissioner number two position. Are there any motions for endorsement for Port of Seattle commissioner number two? Any motions? I'm not on mute. You can hear me, okay? Are there any, sorry, we're having some technical challenges. Are there any motions for Port of Seattle Commissioner position two? Uh, the chair recognizes Carla Rogers. You're, Sorry. You're on mute. Go ahead. Do that again. I would like to, I would like to nominate Sam Cho. Right, Carla Rogers has nominated Sam Cho for Port of Seattle Commissioner position number two. Is there a second? Second. Rachel. Rachel Glass has made a second. Are there any other motions from the floor for Port of Seattle Commissioner position number two? Well, I'm sorry, that's the only eligible candidate. So there are no <laughs> other motions allowed. Uh, so the time to make a motion is now closed. Um, I don't know. All right, Carla, would you like to speak to your motion for two minutes? And and Chris, I, uh, Chris Porter, just making sure that you are timing the speeches. I will. Very short. I'd like to nominate Sam Cho because he's done an excellent job and worked very well with the other port commissioners, and as always, uh, demonstrating dem democratic values. Um, Sam deserves another term, and um, I'd like everyone to support Sam in this vote. Are there any speeches against this not, uh, against this motion? Um, any speeches? Please uh, use your raise hand feature if you'd like to speak against this motion. All right, we will now open up the, the, not, the motions are now, uh, sorry, the speeches are now closed at this time. Uh, we will now open up the ballot for this position. Again, this is a single candidate uh, motion. So we'll leave the ballot open for two minutes. There will either be a winner or someone that's endorsed or we will uh, endorse no one. If you 
please text your vote now to 360-708-4750 if you cannot use the ballot and we will release the ballot. And two minutes to vote. Wait. Um, the ballot just disappeared. Yeah. I had the ballot and then it just disappeared off the screen. The ballot is still open. If you, I can see it. If you are unable to see it, you can text your vote to 360-708-4750. Can you just say that number again? I'm gonna write it real quick. Thank you, Graham. Three. 360-708-4750. Thank you. Can you repeat that, please? We're going to share screen. So give us a second, and we'll have the number on the screen. I just relaunched it. Okay, the ballot has been relaunched. Apologize. There was a technical glitch there. We're doing the easy ones first. So by the time we get to the harder ones, we're going to be a well oiled machine here. I can feel it. And if you don't have a drink in hand, now's a good time to go get one. Um, you have a minute and a half. Rachel, you have your hand up. Sorry, I it was because of the um, my ballot went away, but I'm good. I just voted. Thank you. Okay, the two minutes has elapsed. The uh, votes are clear, 93% in favor of endorsement, 7% against. So uh, Sam Cho is endorsed for Seattle Port Commissioner position two. Okay. All right, we are now going to move to a uh, race with multiple eligible candidates. Um, this is for Port of Seattle Commissioner position number five. And I see Ted Barker has his hand up. I'm now opening the floor to motions. Ted? Uh, yes, I move for the endorsement of Fred Fellowman for Port of Seattle Commissioner position number five. Ted has made a motion for Fred Fellowman position number five. Is there a second? Uh, please use your raise hand so I can recognize you for a second. Bunny Hatcher has raised her hand for a sec. Ben, Bunny? A second. 
Bunny has seconded Fred Fellman's uh, motion for endorsement. Are there any other motions for this position? Any other motions for Port of Seattle Commissioner position five? If you don't use the raise hand feature. I can. Yeah, and that's all I can see. Just double check on this. But I can't see it. Any other motions? Okay, there are no other motions. So the motions are now closed. Ted Barker, you have two minutes to speak to your motion, or you may uh, yield your time to the candidate or another eligible member. I'll do both. Um, the Port of Seattle is a critical part of this city. Um, it's a major economic driver. It is integral to the history and culture of the city. The epicenter of one of the drives for organized labor took place on our waterfront. The airports have allowed for us to be at the forefront of high tech way before there were computers with the likes of Boeing and their plane development. That's why it's critical that we have someone who really understands how the port works and has a commitment to the environment and to it, the port fitting in. I'd like to yield the rest of my time to the candidate, please. Fred? Is that my call? Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I didn't see myself on the screen. So um, it's actually my screensaver is on my screen. But anyway, thank you so much for that uh, indoor, that uh, nomination. And I very much appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, earn your endorsement for a third term on the Seattle Port Commission. I am Port of Seattle Commissioner Fred Fellerman, and I uh, have taken a long time of my professional life to understand port operations as a marine biologist who have studied the killer whale, I found uh, ships on the sea as another species to study. And then I uh, found out ways to ever since the Exxon Valdez find ways to keep them from harming the environment. So I am guided by three principles, commerce, community, Finally. and climate. Check. And sorry about that, but um, so commerce, done. community, and a lot. Can you please pause her? Um, commerce, community, and climate, the importance that the port's uh, economic benefits are widely felt as we transition to a just transition to a clean energy environment. But at the same time, communities next to the port are, take the brunt of a lot of our impacts. And so we need to make sure that those uh, communities are kept whole. And West Seattle is obviously one of the communities that actually pay attention to the port and need to be considered, such as cold ironing T5. I see my time is up. Thank you. Would any eligible voter, voting member or PCO like to speak against this motion to endorse? Any, and like, again, use your raise hand feature if you'd like to speak against this motion to endorse. Anyone like to speak against this motion to endorse? All right, seeing no one else raising their hand to speak against this motion. The speeches are now closed for this nominee. At this time, uh, if any campaign member or candidate, uh, um, sorry, excuse me, I'll go ahead and launch our Port of Seattle Commissioner position number five ballot. I will leave this ballot open for two minutes. It is your responsibility to vote within the window of time. Again, you can also vote using the alternative method and uh, I'm now going to share the screen so you can see the phone number. It's 360-708-4750. And we are going to open up the ballot for Port of Seattle Commissioner position number five. And this is only a one candidate uh, uh, ballot. So it'll either be 60% uh, uh, for that endorsement or no endorsement. Uh, and you can go to fredforport.com to see oh, my- Oh, sorry, Fred, comments. you're out of order. You got to, thank you. No, no, no nominations.
And we are just updating the ballot since we only had one candidate. So. <laughs> While we're waiting, um, I hope you all will join us at our next pop-up social at 5.30 p.m. at the bridge. Um, we do our pop-up socials the fourth Friday of each month. Um, sorry, there is a timer. Whoever's timer is going off, I ask that you mute your phone, please. Thank you. Are we all muted? Okay, we are still updating the polling um, and uh, we're creating a new ballot uh, because uh, the palloting the is, is having some challenges. Additionally, some of you asked for the actual results uh, and we uh, Jordan will be sharing those once they become available for the prior votes. Um, they were overwhelmingly in favor of endorsements the last two, so that's why I called them, but we, we were happy to share the actual numbers uh, once we have validated all of the, the ballots. I just looked at it on my phone and it's in some screen. Okay. okay, we are we are gonna launch the ballot now for Port of Seattle Commissioner number five position. You now have two minutes to vote, two minutes to vote. Okay, I'm happy to share uh, final tallies for the prior votes. So the block vote passed by 98.9% uh, proved the block. Um, Sam Cho's uh, endorsement was passed by 95.7% of eligible 
voters. Okay, this ballot is now closed. I'm going to hold on this one prior to announcing the winner, but we will share those results as soon as they become available. We're now going to move to King County Council District 8. Um, are there any motions? And there are two eligible candidates for this endorsement. Are there any motions for endorsement for King County Council District 8. Any motions for endorsement? Uh, the chair recognizes Chris Lampkin, Christopher Lampkin. Oh, I was going to second, but I, I move that we endorse Teresa Mosqueda. Chris Lampkin has moved to endorse Teresa Mosqueda for King County Council District 8. Is there a second? Uh, the chair recognizes Art Chippendale. I second the motion. And if, it's okay. Motion. I'd much rather have Art make the motion, me second, if that's fine. But well, it's already been recorded. I apologize. <laughs> um, but but Art can Art can yield to you as uh, sorry. Yeah. What, what? Chris, could you spell your last name, please? Yeah, it's L A M P K I N, and I'll just yield to you, Art, if that works. Okay, we're not quite at that point yet, but hold on one moment. Um, are there any other motions for King County Council District 8? The chair recognizes Alexia, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce your okay. last name. Uh, any guess, it's okay. <laughs> um, I, I nominate Sophia Aragon for District 8 King County Council. Sophia has been, Sophia Argon has been nominated, or a motion has been made for Sophia Argon for King County Council District 8. Is there a second? Uh, the chair recognizes Andre Dickerson. I am seconding Sophia's nomination. Okay. And I'm just, there you go. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I, who, who, who nominated Sophia? Alexia, and the last name is I-N-I-G-U-E-S. Okay, those are the only eligible candidates, so motions are now closed for this position. Excuse me, um, Chair. Uh, is there a point of order? Yeah, there's a point of order. This is Chris Porter. Um, yes. Earlier, there was a question about whether or not we um, allow uh, abstain votes. And I was uh, you can just either not vote, uh, or choose no endorsement or the two candidates. Those are the options. Thank you. Per the, per the bylaws. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you raising that up. Uh, all right. So uh, the chair now recognizes uh, Chris Lampkin for two minutes to speak to his nomination for Teresa. And I yield to Art. And Chris yields his two minutes to Art Chippendale. Uh, thank you, Chris. I uh, hope you all can hear me. <clears throat> um, yes, I support Teresa Mosqueda because she has proven over many years uh, that she has the commitment and the experience to bring diverse leaders and organizations and politicians to the table to solve what seem to be intractable problems. And they come up with innovative solutions uh, that have, she's defied systemic racism and classism. For this reason, Teresa has been endorsed by a great many organizations and uh, including 33 local unions representing Teamsters, laborers, healthcare workers, election workers, Seattle's building trades, food and commercial workers, office workers, carpenters, plumbers, electricians, machinists, and many more. She has been endorsed by a number of our elected officials, including Pramila Jayapal, Bob Ferguson, 
Mike Pellicciotti, uh, our state legislators, including Joe Wynn, Joe Fitzgibbon, uh, Emily Alvarado, our former state senator, uh, Sharon Nelson, has also endorsed her. Uh, 24 more progressive uh, Democratic leaders have also endorsed her. Uh, even in the King County government, she's been endorsed by 14 officials, uh, including uh, Dow Constantine and council members Claudia Balducci, Jermaine Zahili, Rod Dombowski, Sarah Paley, Perry, and even Peter von Reichbauer. Uh, 26 city and local officials, including Bruce, uh, Bruce Harrell, mayor of Seattle, council member Lisa Herbel, and seven more current and former members of the city council. Even Cindy Moore, Hugo Garcia, and Stephen Lamphere, all Burien city council members have endorsed her. There are also another some 200 or so community leaders throughout King okay, County. Okay, the time is now up. Thank you. Are there any speeches against the motion? Any, would any PCO or eligible voting member like to rise and speak against the motion? Please raise your hand so you can indicate to me. Anyone like to rise and speak against the motion? Okay, speeches on this motion are now closed. We will now move forward with the other motion to endorse uh, Sophia Argon. The uh, chair recognizes Alexia Ignatius, Ignatius sorry, <laughs> to speak to your motion. You have two minutes, or you may yield your time to the candidate or another eligible voting member. And you are muted. You may want to unmute to speak, Alex. How do I unmute? You are now unmuted. I can hear you. Oh, you're good. good. Okay. Two minutes starts now. Um, I nominate Sophia Aragon for the position of King County District 8. Sophia has consistently showcased her unwavering dedication to the principles and values of the democratic platform. That's uh, very important. Uh, she has a background in both nursing and as an attorney. She possesses the invaluable ability to empathize with and include individuals from all communities, particularly those most in need of support. And Sophia's diverse experience expertise equips her with the necessary skills to approach issues with sensitivity and insight. And her skills as a nurse and her legal background empowers her to advocate for justice and fairness. And so that's why I wholeheartedly um, suggest that we endorse her. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any speeches against this motion? Any speeches against this motion? There are no speeches against this motion. The speeches are now closed. We will now move to vote. Um, we're gonna pull up the, the ballot. You have two minutes to vote. Um, and once again, uh, King County Council District 8 is the position we're voting on. If you need to text the numbers 360-708-4750, and we will launch that ballot as soon as it becomes available. There it is, two minutes to vote. And again, someone needs 60% of the vote in order to win the endorsement, or we will go to a second ballot. I am also able to announce at this point the results for Port of Seattle position five. Uh, the motion to endorse Fred Feldman has passed with 87.6% of the vote. Congratulations, Fred. Thank you very much. Now that I'm unmuted, appreciate it.
We have 20 seconds left to vote. Okay, and we will now close and the balloting. Um, I will wait to uh, share these results. Um, again, if no candidate gets 60% of the vote, we will consider a dual endorsement. Uh, we need to validate the votes. It is likely we will come back to this position, so stay tuned. Um, we're now going to move on uh, while we are validating these votes to Seattle City Council District 1. There are six eligible candidates. Um, so as you can imagine, this will be a lengthier process. All right, I am going to stop sharing and I will uh, now entertain motions for Seattle City Council District 1. Uh, and the chair recognizes Eileen Cody. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that the 34th District endorse Rob Saka for Seattle Council District 1. Uh, second. Oh, excuse me, chair. Chair, chair, chair. Yes, the chair recognizes Chris Porter. Sorry, sorry. Let me just first <laughs> recognize that motion for Rob Saka for Seattle City Council District 1 endorsement. Uh, the chair now recognizes Chris Porter. Uh, second that motion. Okay, Chris has seconded that motion. Again, some candidates have pre-selected folks to make the motion and second for them if they're available. Okay, I will now entertain motion for other candidates. Uh, the chair recognizes Deb Parker. Thank you. I move a uh, nomination of Phil Tavel for Seattle City Council position for District 1. Good. Uh, Barker has moved to motion for Phil Tavel, District 1. Jordan Crawley seconding. Jordan Crawley, Chair recognizes Jordan Crawley. He has seconded the motion for T Phil Tavel. The Chair will now uh, welcome other motions for this position. Uh, Nick, the Chair recognizes Nick Benazza. Hello, I uh, nominate uh, uh, for uh, this position, Preston Anderson. Okay, I Preston, second. Steve oh, Butts has seconded. So the motion has been made to endorse Preston Anderson for Seattle City Council District 1. Uh, Steve Butts has seconded. Uh, the chair now recognizes Carla Rogers. Thank you, Graham. I nominate Marin Costa. Okay, Carla Rogers has nominated Marin Costa for CLC Council District 1. The chair now recognizes Teresa Mosqueda. Second. Teresa Mosqueda has seconded Marin Costa's motion. Are there any other motions? At this point, I will need to see a raise hand feature for other motions. Other motions? Yeah. Any other motions? Okay, there are four candidates recognized. Uh, I will uh, ask for speeches in the order in which the motions were made. Uh, the chair now recognizes Eileen Cody for two minutes to speak for your motion. You may yield all or part of your time to the candidate or another eligible voter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to endorse uh, and, and uh, nominate Rob Saka. I met with Rob uh, after he decided to run. I have to say that I did not know him prior to that, but I met with him and discussed uh, issues with him and I was very impressed really with his common sense. And God knows we could use more of that in politics and especially on the city council. I believe that he will bring an important perspective to the table. He has a challenge, has had a challenging background. He come, came out of foster care, was raised by his immigrant father, uh, as his father raised him by himself, 
And then he went on to go into the Air Force after the Air Force got his degree and began working as an attorney and becoming the successful individual that he is today. I've been impressed with how hard he's working. Uh, it's evidenced by the strong grassroots that his campaign has shown. Last I checked, he's still in uh, the lead in the democracy vouchers in this race. And I was in politics long enough to tell you that it, it takes a candidate that has a fire in his belly to want to do this work, to want to campaign this hard, and then to be an outstanding elected official after the votes are counted. I have full confidence that uh, Rob will make an excellent council member and I uh, cede the rest of my time to him. Thank you, Eileen. So listen, folks, I would be honored at the opportunity to serve you all. Uh, I'm known for my passion and authenticity, authenticity and everyone knows on this call that I will fight for you uh, and I would love to earn your endorsement at this meeting and your vote because I will fight for you and I will fight for doing what's right and representing democratic values. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, the chair will now recognize anyone who would like to make a speech against the nomination for Rob Saka. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, anyone speak against the motion, I apologize. Anyone would like to speak against the motion? Any speeches against the motion? Okay, there are now no more speeches related to this motion for Rob Saka's endorsement. I will now recognize Deb Barker for two minutes to speak in favor of her motion for Phil Tapple. Thank you so much. My name is Deb Barker, and I'm glad to uh, vote for Phil Tavel. I'm really glad that Phil's decided to run to represent District 1 again. And yet, unlike the last two campaigns where I didn't vote for Phil, I am now ready to vote for Phil Tavel for City Council. I'm a retired government employee and community activist, and I have been really concerned that people running for D1 did not understand what a city council position entails. But I believe that Phil Tavel is the only candidate who understands the intricacies of the city council job and who has what that position requires. Phil has what it takes. He walks the talk. He's been an active presence in the community for years. You know where his dedication is focused. It's clearly on District 1. I appreciate that. I also appreciate that he is a person who can help opposing sides find common ground and move forward. In my opinion, that is a very rare talent that is desperately needed on the city council. He has earned my vote, and I urge the 34th District Democrats to endorse Phil Tavel. I yield the remainder of my time to candidate Tavel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, there we go. I was going to ask the question about the time left. Thank you. So thank you to the 34th Dem, to all of you for showing up. Um, you know, Ed, it was about 15 years ago that I first came to the 34th. Uh, and I remember when Jackie Duprat and Ed Duprat took me down to the open uh, uh, lobbying day down in Olympia and really got me started on my journey. And the fact is, I spent two years on the e-board for the 34th Dems. And I truly believe that public service over politics is what we need right now. We need someone who understands District 1, who's been here, who's been a part of the district. And I can tell you, I've helped raise funds for West Side, uh, for West Side Baby, for the West Seattle Food Line, uh, Food Bank, for the West Seattle Helpline, for the Senior Center. And I've been around. I've been here. I've been a public defender for 15 years, now an administrative law judge for the last two years. And I was a high school physics teacher before that. And I really, truly would like to represent this district so that we have a voice, that we have someone that's accessible and that will listen and that really will prioritize the basics. You know, this is a position about making sure our potholes get repaired and our streetcars work. So please, I ask you for your endorsement, your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any, the chair will now recognize anyone that would like to speak against the motion to endorse Phil Tavel. You need to use a raise hand feature if you'd like to be recognized. Anyone like to speak against the motion? Are there any speeches against the motion? Seeing no one rising to speak, the speeches are now closed for this motion. On the, the chair will now recognize Nick Benazza to speak to the motion to endorse 
Preston Anderson for Seattle City Council District 1. Yeah, thank you. Um, I nominate uh, Preston Anderson. Um, uh, actually, he's our 34th uh, district representative of the King County Democrats and also a PCO in 3632. Uh, Preston is the only candidate with, uh, uh, with extensive real world, uh, real world experience in managing homeless programs while utilizing the latest evidence-based practices, the only candidate that actually works in this, uh, in this field. And I, what I'd like to do is uh, give my time to the candidate, Preston Anderson. Thank you, Nick. Uh, and thank you everyone for having me. And uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, and uh, um, uh, hopefully you can, uh, folks will, will see that my experience is gonna be well suited for the city council. I'm a clinical social worker. I've been in the field for the last 12 years and bring the uh, experience to the city council to ensure that people get housed. And we begin to reverse the trend of overdose deaths in the city. Uh, if we look at the trends of overdose deaths in the city, uh, last year we exceeded 1,000. Right now we are on a pace to exceed even that. To me, that's unconscionable. I bring clinical experience. I've worked in inpatient psychiatric settings. I've worked in trauma treatment. I've worked in uh, addictions treatment. And I have a clear idea what we can do to reverse those trends of uh, ongoing homelessness and uh, the increasing rate of overdose deaths in the city. Um, I'm a veteran. Uh, I'm a union member. I've been a union member since uh, 2008. Um, and I think that's one, one exception among the other candidates here in this race. Uh, I've fought for union rights and uh, while I was at the, uh, uh, got my start at the Downtown Emergency Service Center at, uh, under SEIU 1199, fought for increased wages uh, at that, that facility, and I'll continue to fight for union rights uh, on the city council. Um, I've lived out my values. I've even uh, traveled all the way to South Carolina to fight against uh, gerrymandering and voter suppression. So I live out my values and I'll bring that energy and that motivation, that passion, that authenticity to the city council. Thank you. Thank you, Preston. Are there any speeches against the motion to endorse Preston Anderson for Seattle City Council District 1? Are there any speeches against, again, use the raise hand feature if you'd like to be recognized or let one of our co-hosts know. Any speeches against? Okay, the chair will now recognize Carla Rogers for her motion to endorse Marin Anderson for Seattle City Council District 1. Carla, you have two minutes. That's Marin Costa, Graham, just FYI. All right, can we please start over? We will start over. Sorry, there was a mute and the timer did not begin, so you're fine. <laughs> and thanks for the phonetic correction. I thought I was saying it that way, but clearly not. Thank you. Lauren Costa has the right balance of progressive democratic values, leadership, pragmatic problem solving skills that are needed on the council. She has sole endorsements from MLK Labor, UFCW 3000, IBEW 46, SEIU 925, the National Women's Political Caucus, Teresa Mosqueda, and more. I urge you to support her and cede the rest of my time to Marin. Thank you, Carla. Good evening, everyone. I've lived in District 1 for 20 years, Seattle for 33 years, and I've been a senior leader in the tech industry for 25 years, where I've managed big teams and million-dollar budgets, earned over a dozen patents, and brought rival teams together to get stuff done. A few years ago, I chose to put my entire career on the line to do what was right. In 2020, Amazon put warehouse workers in deadly conditions and was failing to act on climate change. As a dedicated employee and a mom, I wanted Amazon to do better. I led thousands of my coworkers to take a stand. I outlined a plan to win and did the work and delivered results. Our actions led to Amazon's climate pledge, the $10 billion Bezos Earth Fund and increased worker safety. Now I want to help District 1 and Seattle rise to the challenges of our time. We can lead with compassion and refuse to tolerate harmful behavior. We can bring people inside by providing stable emergency housing and wraparound services. And while we prepare for climate change, we can build a thriving city we're proud to pass on to future generations. I'm running because District 1 voters deserve an experienced leader who has the proven ability to listen to bring people together, to build trust and common sense consensus and deliver results. 
That's what I've been doing for 25 years. And that's what you can expect from me when I'm elected. I would be honored to earn your vote. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's hope my upstate New York does, accent doesn't fail me this time. Are there any speeches against the nomination for Marin Costa for uh, Seattle City Council District 1? Any speeches against the motion? Any speeches, please raise your, raise your hand. Any speeches against the motion? All right, speeches are now closed for all motions. We will now move to the ballot. Uh, we will launch the ballot as soon as it is ready. Let's launch the ballot for this. Uh, once this ballot is launched, I will announce the results for King County Council District 8 position. Sorry, we're going to have to restart that poll. It was accurate on my end. Yeah. Sorry, you may have to vote again. We're going to close this poll and relaunch again. Again, if you're unable to vote by Zoom, please text your vote to 360-708-4750. Include your full name as it shows on your membership. Graham? Sorry, the, the chair recognizes Rachel for point of yeah. order. Uh, Graham, can you give some uh, advising information about uh, folks who want to do uh, poll watching for certain candidates in the breakout rooms? Yes, let me clarify that with the team here and I will get back to you on that. Thank you. So unfortunately, the ability to have the breakout room is not functioning. If folks would like to see the results in detail afterwards, we can provide that to candidates who shared folks that they want to participate in that ballot validation process. Um, there were only three candidates that actually provided names for that tally viewing. While this ballot is being uh, completed, I will just, well, I'm sorry, I will let this ballot complete. You have uh, 40 more seconds to vote. As a reminder, we have more than two candidates for this ballot. So if no candidate gets 60%, we will move to a second ballot. Um, and the top two vote getters will be the options. There will be no, the no endorsement option will not be available. If you'd like to not vote, you don't have to. Okay, the poll has ended. We will calculate those results. Um, I would now like to move back to the King County Council District 8 race. Um, we have results from the first ballot. Uh, Sophia Argon got 37.6% of the vote. Teresa Mosqueda got 59.4% of the vote. No endorsement got two point, I'm sorry, well, 3% of the vote. Um, and those are validated votes. So now the chair will uh, open the floor to a motion for dual endorsement. The chair recognizes Christopher Lampkin. Yeah, I'd like to um, 
not move for dual, but can I ask that we do a revote in that for a sole? That's a uh, sole vote. Sole endorsements are out of order. So it's either a dual endorsement or not. Well, then I would move for no endorsement in that race. Hold on one second, please. Uh, Gina, parliamentarian point of order, are you there? I am here if I can get off mute. Okay. <laughs> if no candidate within a two candidate uh, endorsement um, receives the first ballot, we just move to, to dual endorsement. Is that correct? Or is there a... Um, that is correct. We move to, or someone can make a uh, motion. A yes, there is no second ballot for the top two candidates. Yep. Right. Yes. Okay. Can I uh, clarify? Because there was technically three options on that ballot. So there is Teresa, Sophia, and then no endorsement. I would view that as three options. And so if we move to a second option, there could be two. <clears throat> so, so the bylaws, if you go to the endorsement bylaws, it is section. Uh, section, uh, let's go here, section seven. Uh, and then we are going to move to uh, if no candidate received 60%, section 7.3, if no candidate received 60% and there are two nominees, a dual endorsement may be considered. There is no sole endorsement option. That was the option. Okay, so is there a motion for dual endorsement? Uh, De Chair recognizes Deb Barker. Hi, I, mo I move endorsement of a dual, uh, sorry, a dual endorsement. Deb Barker has made a motion for dual endorsement. Is there a second? Chair recognizes Art Chippendale. Yes. I move that we have, uh, I second that motion. Uh, the chair will now recognize Deb Barker. You can speak to two minutes yeah. to your motion. I cede my time to uh, the seconder. Okay, the chair recognizes oh. Art Chippendale for the two minutes. Uh, yes, well, both of these candidates are, uh, are great candidates. And uh, there's, if we are going to endorse the two of them, then we will be supporting the two of them equally. So I believe that that is uh, the best thing to do in this case. Uh, we as a organization will uh, provide all of the support that we normally do for endorsed candidates and we will do so according to whatever it is they need, or we will do it uh, equally for them. So I, uh, I believe that that, uh, I believe that the motion uh, should be passed. All right, are there any speeches against the motion for dual endorsement? Any speeches against the motion for dual endorsement? Uh, Christopher Lemkin, your hand is up. Are you, are you? Yeah, I'm going to speak against. Okay, go ahead. You have two minutes. Actually, that is my hand to speak. I'm sorry. That is, uh, sorry. That, uh, which one is it? There. Sorry. Oh, there we are. Sorry, Chair, that is my hand up to speak against the motion. Except oh, that it's just I, called. Sorry, I recognize Christopher Lampkin. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> Christopher Lampkin? Yeah. Uh, it's true, both candidates are great, but if you look at the vote, Teresa was a few votes away from getting the 60% threshold, and the message that a duel sends is that we think these candidates are the same. I think, uh, given Teresa's track record of standing with working people, helping our city um, and our region through an affordable housing crisis, um, the choice is clear, and putting out to our community who looks to us for guidance that a dual endorsement is what we're coming up with will not give them the best information. And I think if we can uh, 
take a moment, stay out, maybe revisit at a later date. Um, we would be better suited and our public would get a chance to do some research um, and find out uh, where the candidates stand on the different issues, everyone's different track records and come away understanding that Teresa um, is really gonna be a champion on the King County Council when we have to tackle things like our behavioral health crisis. And so uh, I would speak against the motion of a duel um, and ask for folks to vote no. The chair now recognizes uh, Art Chippendale. I believe you seconded the motion uh, to speak in favor of dual endorsement. You have two minutes. Uh, yes, but like I, uh, I listened to Chris Lampkin's uh, argument, and uh, I think it 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 does pose some other possibilities, and uh, so. Given that, um, something that I, I hadn't considered before, uh, I think that Teresa Mosqueda has the ability to go all the way uh, with this, uh, regardless of whether or not we endorse them both. Or uh, So I am going to change my, my motion. I no longer back my original motion to uh, do a dual endorsement. Actually, I made the motion, Art. Okay. I I no longer support it. <laughs> Is there any other speech? Uh, okay, I don't know what speech that was either for or against. Um, uh, is there a, a speech against the motion? Is there a speech against the motion? Uh, Christopher Porter, the chair recognizes you for two minutes and you can start your own timer. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. For as long as I've been in the 34th, one thing is very clear that our endorsement means a lot. We are very strong, engaged, and powerful LD. <clears throat> and one way that we've maintained that is by speaking clearly and loudly for those candidates that we support. If we cannot reach a sole endorsement, then our best move is to rest with no endorsement and wait until after the um, primary uh, general primary to get into the general to see which candidates will then prevail. I agree with the previous speaker that maybe this is the time to do a few more door knocking and conversations so that one candidate will overwhelmingly reach that threshold for a single endorsement. So I um, press everyone to vote against the motion for dual endorsement. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the speeches are now closed, but Deb Barker, are you raising your hand for a point of order? Uh, yes, if I could clarify if the motion I made uh, does not have a second, uh, should we go back and try for a second on the motion that I made? Or yeah, I've, I've never motion? had someone call back their second, so let me clarify with the parliamentarian. Uh, parliamentarian, is that, can you recall your second or is it in the the books as part of the minutes at this it's, point. It's there. Right? I believe that yeah. Art has withdrawn his second, so we do need a second on the table for the motion. And do we do the speeches again or just move on? I would leave that up to you. <laughs> okay, so we need to, I, the chair recognizes Eileen Cody. I will uh, second the, the endorsement for a duel. Okay. Okay. Well, to be fair, since the last endorsement um, had some changes, uh, last motion, I apologize, has some changes. I'm going to recognize Deb Barker, again, who made the motion to speak in favor of the motion for two minutes, and we'll just do this again. Thank you very much, Graham. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I, I'm sorry if the numbers don't Count, add up to 60%, but that's what the numbers are. And I believe that we should have a dual endorsement since that's what the bylaws mm -hmm. offer. Uh, I think it is an opportunity for many people to have some questions answered and to look into 
a candidate who is just as worthy as another candidate. So I would encourage everybody to support a dual endorsement. And I do recall that this organization has done that many a time. So I certainly support a dual endorsement today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the chair now recognizes uh, the first hand I see up is Christopher Lampkin. You have two minutes. Um, and Christopher Porter, if you could reset the clock, please. Uh, Christopher Lampkin, two minutes to speak against. I just want to uh, recognize how great it is we get to do this all over again. Democracy is awesome. Um, so again, Teresa, it sounds like one vote away from getting there. A dual endorsement sends the wrong message to our community. And this race is so important that I am missing putting my daughters to bed because I wanted to be here to make sure that we were able to support somebody who is fighting to address our public health crisis, who is fighting to address our behavioral health crisis, and has a track record of standing with the working people, not just from her time on city council in Seattle, but her time fighting for working people across our state. We want to send a clear message in saying that both candidates are equally deserving of uh, the 34th residents' votes is not true. And so the folks in this room, we know there's overwhelming majority for Teresa and telling our community who looks to us for guidance, like my brother Chris Porter just said, we don't want to be unclear. And so not taking a position is the best option in this race. And I call on all my 34th Democrats to join me and working people who support Teresa in making sure that we aren't sending mixed signals and we vote no on this dual endorsement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The chair now recognizes Eileen Cody to speak in favor of her second. And Chris, if you could restart the clock. Oh, I. Do we need two speeches? I think we can go on and vote. You can choose not to speak. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, since there is no second for speech, uh, we will move to the ballot. Do we have the ballot? Excuse me. Is there a point of order, Vern? Uh, point of order question. Uh, last time, uh, several years ago, when we had a similar situation, it was pointed out that the bylaws did not allow for a uh, follow on endorsement after a no endorsement for the general. And I wanted to know if the rules had changed or would a, an endorsement in the general election be uh, something that, that the, dis, that the uh, group would be able to, to do? Or is this our one opportunity to choose the endorsement and this is it and we're done? If we there, say no endorsement now, that. will there be no endorsement? I understand the question. I do not believe the bylaws prevent us from considering this in the future. Okay, are we set for the ballot? Yeah. Okay, we will now open the ballot. Uh, the, the speeches are now closed. We will open the ballot for two minutes to consider a dual endorsement for King County Council position eight. The options are dual endorsement, no endorsement. This does require 60%. And as a reminder, if you need to text your vote, text it to 360-708-4750, 360-708-4750. Uh, operators are standing by. Please uh, put in your... Uh, full name so we understand who is voting. And are you sitting around and bored right now? Oh, great opportunity to go ahead and purchase a ticket for the July 22nd fundraiser at C&P Coffee. Um, you can support all of the candidates that have been endorsed or, um, or candidates that are still seeking our endorsement. So please go ahead and purchase your ticket now at CMP Coffee.
uh, not at CMP Coffee, I'm sorry, on our website. <laughs> That's where the event will be then. Okay, we're now gonna end this poll. The poll is now closed. Uh, we will announce the results soon. Um, we don't yet have the validated votes for Seattle City Council District 1, so stand by for those. Okay, we will now move forward to, uh, we are now on Seattle School Director District 6. There are uh, two candidates eligible for this position, eligible for endorsement for this position. At this time, our parliamentarian, Gina Topp, will recuse herself while we consider this position. Um, Ann Martin, our endorsements and resolutions chair, will assume the position of parliamentarian temporarily. Um, I will now recognize motions for uh, Seattle City, Seattle School Director District 6. Uh, uh, the chair recognizes Rachel Glass. Thank you, Graham. I would like to endorse Gina Topp for Seattle School Director District 6. Okay, Second. Motion. Uh, motion has been made. <laughs> I don't know who's talking. The motion has been made for uh, Gina Top for Seattle School Director District 6. Uh, is there a second? The chair recognizes Chris Porter. Thank you, Chair. And I second the motion for Gina Top. Motion has been seconded. All right. Are there any other motions for Seattle School Director District 6? Please use the raise hand feature. Are there any other motions for Seattle School Director District 6? Any other motions? All right, hearing no other motions, um, we will now take speeches for the motion on the table. Virginia Top for Seattle School Director District 6 endorsement. Uh, the chair recognizes, and uh, I'll let Chris Porter start the timer. The chair recognizes um, Rachel Glass. Thank you. Um, I, I have uh, worked personally with Gina uh, as, for, as first vice chair when she was the chair of the 34th Dems a few years ago. Um, I believe that Gina has the goods for what it takes to be a great school board director. Our organization went through some difficult situations legally and code of conduct issues uh, several years ago. Gina handled these situations that were difficult or even fraught at times with calm and grace. She uh, looks carefully at situations that she sees. Uh, she sees what needs to be done. She is not afraid to be proactive, to ask for the help, resources, and cooperations needed to achieve success. And I know that the school board uh, has some challenges right now in the current times. And I really think that someone like Gina would be an excellent candidate um, to, to navigate those tough challenges. Uh, her endorsements, she's got Dow Constantine and some of our um, state legislators who are backing her all the way. Um, please join me in endorsing Gina Top. I yield the rest of my time back to the candidate. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, as you said, I'm Gina Top. I'm running for Seattle School Board Director District 6. I'm really running because I experienced firsthand uh, underfunded schools here in Washington, and I'm sending my daughter into that same underfunded school system. And uh, I know that we need uh, leaders who are able 
to uh, bring sort of confidence and innovation to, to this role. And as a former uh, Chief Legal Counsel and Policy Advisor in King County, I have the experience to manage complex policy and budget challenges. So running for, for my kid and all the kids here in uh, District 6. So I ask for your vote this evening. Thank you. Are there any speeches against this motion to endorse Gina Topp for Seattle School Director District 6? Any motions, I'm sorry, any speeches against? Please use the raise hand feature, any speeches against? All right, speeches are now closed. This is a single candidate motion. Um, so we will, this will be a one ballot uh, consideration. Uh, we'll now open, Are we? do we have the ballot ready? For, For Seattle school director? It's at the bottom. Yeah. All right, we will get that bell up there. Uh, while we're waiting, uh, just so you know, our next meeting is Wednesday, July 12th, and we will consider more candidates for endorsements. So if you think this is fun, join us then. Um, and King County has another Proposition 1 coming up, uh, the Veteran Seniors and Human Services Levy on August 1st. Uh, that's on our primary ballot, and I know we'll have some folks coming to speak to that critical proposition um, and we'll consider that for endorsement at our July 12th meeting. So see you there. That'll be on the August 1st primary. Okay. All right, we are ready to launch that ballot. So you have two minutes to vote once it's launched. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to run to the restroom. If you need to do that as well, please do. And after you vote though, after you vote, and if you need to text your vote, you may text it to um, Where's that number? 360-708-4750. That's 360-708-4750. I will be back in less than two minutes. Okay, that whole ballot is now closed. We will announce the results uh, shortly. Um, just checking with our tally committee to see if we're ready to announce the Seattle City Council District 1. Jordan, are you ready if you want to speak into the microphone? Okay. So we'll hold off on that or? Okay, we're ready to announce the Seattle City Council District 1 um, race. Uh, so Preston Anderson received 11.1% of the vote. Uh, Marin 
Costa received 24.6% of the vote. Rob Saka received 50% of the vote. Phil Tavel received 12, 11.9% of the vote. No endorsement received 2.4% of the vote. So we will be moving as soon as it's ready to a, uh, a ballot with the top two candidates, which will be Marin Costa and Rob Saka. If either of those candidates receive 60% of the vote, they will receive the endorsement. If neither do, uh, we will move to consider a dual endorsement for that race. Um, while we are preparing the ballot for that, we're going to move forward to um, Burien City Council position two. All right, are there any motions for endorsement for Burien City Council position two? And no candidate provided me with uh, pre selected motioners or seconders. So um, I will I will wait to see if there are any hands raised. Are there any motions for the Burien City Council position two race? Mm -hmm. Any motions? Any motions? Okay, we will not consider that race for an endorsement. There were no motions for Burien City Council position two. We will now move forward to Burien City Council position four. I do have, uh, I will, the chair now recognize, oh, sorry, are there any motions for Burien City Council position four? The chair now recognizes Carla Rogers. Here we go. Um, I nominate Patricia Hudson for position four. Patricia Hudson has been nominated for Burien City Council. I'm sorry, position, a motion has been made to endorse Burien City Council position four. Uh, Patricia Hudson, sorry, I'm getting feedback. Um, the chair now recognizes Julia, Julie Whitaker. Yes, I second the motion. Okay, the motion has been seconded for Burien City Council position four. Uh, the chair will now recognize other uh, motions. Uh, the chair recognizes Pamela Pamela Jorgensen. Pamela Jorgensen, you have to unmute if you're going to make a motion. Okay, I'm going to go in the other room. Okay. I'm going to be scared because I'll find out right now. Okay. Um, my husband Terry has decided to make the initial motion. Okay. Terry. This is Terrence C. Jorgensen from uh, Shorewood and Burien. I motion the endorsement for Daniel Martin for the Burien City Council position number four. Okay. Terrence Jorgensen has made a motion for Daniel Martin for Burien City Council position four endorsement. Is there a second? Still has his hand. Pamela? Yes. Yeah, oh, sorry. Someone... I'm Pamela Jorgensen. I would like to second that motion. I'm very pleased to see that Daniel's running. Okay. Are there any other motions? The chair recognizes Phil Tavel. I would like to nominate for endorsement Kevin Schilling. Okay. Kevin Schilling has been nominated for endorsement for King County Council position number four by Phil Tavel. Is there a second? The chair recognizes Sophia Argon. This is Mayor Sophia Aragon for the city of Burien. I second the motion for Kevin Schilling. The motion has been seconded for Kevin Schilling. All right, those are all of the eligible candidates. This is now a ballot that will include three candidates. I will now start speeches in the order in which motions were made. Uh, the chair recognizes Carla Rogers to speak for two minutes for your endorsement motion for Patricia Hudson. Burien City Council is desperate for a change, someone willing to work together with council members to solve problems. Patricia Hudson is ready for this challenge. With that, I defer the balance of my time to the candidate. And Patricia, you have to unmute to speak. 
Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Graham. Good evening, and thank you, Carla, and thank you, 34th District. My name is Patricia Hudson, a single mother of two sons and an HR professional at SEIU 775, a Burian resident for over 30 years, who has served as a 33rd District PCO and native Washingtonian. As a child of union parents, they taught me the value of solidarity and working together to accomplish a common goal to create value for all. The city of Burien is frozen in inaction. As a servant leader and future city council member, I will make decisions with an eye for the future of Burien. <laughs> the time for change is now. As an HR professional, I collaborate daily and negotiate viable solutions along stakeholders of varying interests. Burien needs progressive change. The time is now to bring solutions forward to ease our homeless crisis, the time is now to build and provide affordable housing based on income. The time is now to increase the Burien minimum wage and reinvest in our community and downtown core. The time is now to focus on the root cause for mental illness and behavioral health. The time is now to collaborate with businesses and neighbors and communities and focus on public safety. And lastly, the time is now to create sustainable energy solutions for Burien. I'm the change agent you seek, not just another voice, not a person seeking and looking to grow my political career. I'm a person of action. As a city council member, I will collaborate to solve issues in our community and create opportunities for all, not just a few. I humbly ask for your vote. Please vote for me, Patricia Hudson, Burien City Council member, position four. I humbly ask for your endorsement. Thank you for your time this evening. Are there any speeches against this motion for endorsing Patricia Hudson? for Burien City Council position four. Please use the raise hand feature. Any motions against, I'm sorry, any speeches against, speeches against. Seeing no speeches against, the, the speeches are closed for this motion. The chair now recognizes Terrence Jorgensen for his motion for Daniel Martin for Burien City Council position four. Uh, I'll yield my time to Daniel Martin. Greetings, 34th District. Uh, I'm running for council because I believe that housing is a human right, that democracy is important and must be protected, and that public safety requires public thriving. I've been serving my community and advocating for change since the 2017 police killings in quick succession of Tommy Lay in Geary and Charlena Lyles in Seattle and Javon Joseph McDade in Kent. I began speaking in public council meetings, working with local civic groups and organizers and finding opportunities to be directly involved in democracy at the local level by serving on local boards and commissions. I also serve on the core leadership team off? of the Geary yes. Severe Weather Shelter. The affordable housing crisis yeah, in our region has hit our community so hard, contributing to displacement, stretching families' budgets to their breaking point, and driving far too many into experiencing homelessness. I believe, and data supports, that housing is the solution to homelessness. On council, I will work to put a stop to the harmful and traumatic sweeps of unsheltered people without an available and appropriate offer of housing. I will also work to improve infrastructure and aggressively work to meet our housing goals including missing middle housing, simplifying the process for homeowners to build tiny homes and ADUs in their backyards, and I will protect and expand upon the affordable housing demonstration project. Burien is at a crossroads. There are many voices in our community that are clamoring for more sweeps of people with no other options but living outside, for a ramping up or restarting of the war on drugs, for a democracy that works for the already well off, Voices that demonize and dehumanize our neighbors who are suffering from unaffordable housing, from low wages, from bias and hate based on their identity or sex. I believe that democracy can only be effective if it works for all. Democracy demands we protect each other, particularly those most vulnerable, including BIPOC, LGBTQIA+, and people experiencing mental illness and homelessness. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Are there any speeches against the motion to consider Daniel Martin for endorsement. Any speeches against? Any speeches against? Okay, the chair now recognizes Phil Tabble for two minutes to speak to his motion to endorse Kevin Schilling for Burien City Council position four. 
And I would actually very much like to cede all of my time to Kevin Schilling. Thank you, Phil. Hello, 34th LD. I was 14 years old when I came to my first 34th LD meeting. I continued through the organization while working full-time at PCC as a UFCW union member and a full-time student at South Seattle Community College. Now, I'm the political director for Congressman Derek Kilmer, where I work to elect Democrats across the state in really difficult places for Democrats. Last year, we successfully helped State Senator Emily Randall get reelected to the State Senate, Yasmin Trudeau to the State Senate, as well as reelect multiple state representatives from the peninsula. As Deputy Mayor of Burien, I've taken my democratic values to decision-making, working to pass a utility tax relief program for seniors and working people, getting internet for low-income families during the pandemic, changing our child care codes to make it easier for folks to create culturally relevant child care locations, passing hazard pay for essential workers during the pandemic, bringing in millions of dollars for transit-oriented development, passing a climate action plan, and bringing in multiple affordable housing programs to the city. Leaders across the region have worked with me and endorsed me for re-election, including Congressman Adam Smith, State Senator Joe Wen, State Senator Karen Kaiser, State Rep Tina Orwell, King County Assessor John Wilson, Port Commissioner Sam Cho, and former Governor Christine Gregoire, as well as the LGBTQ Victory Fund, Moms Demand Action, bus unions for bus drivers, grocery workers, carpenters, iron workers, laborers, sailors, and more. Now we have the ability to continue our work on Burien City Council, because as we've seen in the news, we need to do more. I'm running again to tackle gun violence in our community because we've seen too many senseless assaults. I'm running again to build more housing of all kinds for everyone in every part of our community. I'm running again to get more investments for transit and electric vehicles, as well as opportunities for homeowners to switch over to low or no carbon emission utilities. I'm running again to continue to put pressure on the port to do more for communities under the flight path. And I'm running to continue to propose common sense solutions to homelessness, like emergency permitting for shelters, streamlining the RFP process for service providers, and enhancing zoning opportunities for behavioral health centers and mental health programs. I ask for your endorsement tonight. Thank you so much. Are there any speeches against the motion to consider Kevin Schilling for King County? I'm sorry, ugh, Burien City Council position number four. Any speeches against? Use the raise, raise hand feature. Okay, speeches are now closed for this particular position. Uh, Jordan, are we ready to? post that ballot. Okay, the ballot will now open. There are three candidates and no endorsement as an option. While we're waiting, uh, we are going to have a 34th family picnic and bake-off on Saturday, September 9th at Lincoln Park. So please mark your calendars. Uh, that's a family picnic. Saturday, September 9th at Lincoln Park. Hope to see you there September 9th. Uh, great time to close out the summer. Hopefully a few more days of sunshine before the big dark and rain come. So um, see you there on September 9th. Graham. Rachel Glass. Chair yes, Witness. Graham, question. Do we have a time on that September 9th picnic or not yet? To be announced, but it'll be in the afternoon, um, okay. kind of mid-afternoon time period. Thank you. We've got lovely, but thanks for asking, because I, now I can share we have lovely space down by the water, a whole pavilion, multiple picnic tables. Um, it'll be quite, quite nice. Okay, 10 more seconds, and we have another result to announce after this poll closes. Okay, and this poll is now ended. I am, uh, uh, so we do not, we're still validating votes for, that are been texted in uh, for King County Council District 8, so stay tuned for that, but I can announce that 
Uh, Gina Top has won our endorsement for Seattle School Board position six, 98% uh, for her motion to endorse and 2% for no endorsement. So congratulations, Gina. And now you can assume your role of parliamentarian. So thank you so much uh, and congratulations. I'm you. Um, okay, so this ballot is now closed. Um, we will move to our final race for the evening. Uh, but but as a reminder, we have uh, at least two ballots to go back to for uh, King County Council District 8, and we still have to wrap up Seattle City Council District 1, so do not leave after this. And this, this race for Burien City Council Position 4 may also go to another ballot, so stay tuned. Okay, for Burien City Council Position 6, there is one candidate eligible for endorsement. I will now entertain motions for endorsement for Burien City Council position number six. Uh, the chair recognizes Carla Rogers. Carla's finding her unmute button. Awesome, I am thrilled to... All right, lots of computer problems. I'm thrilled that Crystal Marks is seeking to return to city council. Her knowledge of the issues in Burien and her willingness to collaborate on solutions for all Burien residents Wait, is much needed. Wait, making a motion? Sorry, you're just making a motion. My guess, I was making a speech. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I am making a motion to nominate Crystal Marks. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? The chair recognized Sarah Moore. Sarah Moore, you have to unmute. Sarah Moore. I did not have my hand up, but I'll second. Okay. Um, that closes the motions for this position. Uh, the chair recognizes Carla Rogers. Now you may make a speech for two minutes. Okay, to, to repeat what I said before, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm thrilled that Crystal Marks is seeking to return to City Council. Her knowledge of the issues in Burien and her willingness to collaborate on solutions for all Burien residents is much needed. I will cede the rest of my time to the candidate. Thank you, Carla. Good evening, 34th. My name is Crystal Marks. My pronouns are she and they, and I am a former 34th LDPCO redistricted back into the 33rd and former Burien City Council member and Deputy Mayor from 2018 to 2021. I'm running for Burien City Council again to help put an end to the time wasting, endless bickering and personal attacks that we see on the dais while human beings are sleeping outdoors a mere block away. I'm running because I know how to build coalitions, empower those closest to the pain to identify their own solution and how to work with regional leaders to get Burien's issues resolved. I would not have rejected King County funding to address our homeless encampment issues just to start. I am running because working families in our city are being asked to do more and more with less and less. And we need to be supporting them with reliable, affordable childcare at our community center and in city supported and co-funded school located programs. I'm running because Boulevard Park is in a food desert and we have an opportunity with the Ambon Boulevard and Boulevard Park redesign to make sure we draw grocery stores selling fresh fruits and vegetables and who provide good union jobs. I'm running because Burien has an ambitious climate action plan that will do us no good unless it is followed and prioritized at every opportunity. While on the city council from 2018 to 2021, I fought for tenant protections um, and was the, one of the ones that were the most progressive in Washington state outside of the city of Seattle. I supported hazard pay for UFCW 21 and all grocery employees in the city for $5 an hour more during the pandemic. And we stood up to the grocery stores when they brought their frivolous lawsuit to Burien and that lawsuit was overturned with our Thank support. You. Are there any speeches against this motion to endorse Crystal Marks for Burien City Council position number four? Any speeches against, you may use the raise hand feature. Any speeches against? 
Okay, speeches are now closed. Again, this is a single ballot race because there's one candidate. The options are to endorse the motion on the table or no endorsement. Are we ready to launch that? Yeah. Okay. While we're launching this ballot and voting, I just want to recognize the, the band. Uh, so the great folks that are behind the scenes making this all happen. Uh, we have Hannah Cameron, uh, who has been managing all the vote validating. Uh, Jordan Crawley has been working with her to make sure that we know when it's time to announce the votes and, and getting all the vote totals together. Uh, we have uh, uh, Carla Rogers, who is managing all of the uh, technology. Uh, which is no small feat. Uh, uh, Ann Martin, who is helping to validate speakers and uh, ensure that the right folks are, are speaking when they need to. Um, and, uh, and Chris Porter, who is helping us out with the timing of all this. So thank you to all of you. Uh, and I'm sorry, Leah Griffin also, who is, is helping out with the alternative voting. So this could not have happened uh, without all of them and the countless hours that we have spent uh, preparing for this also, um, ensuring that even if there are challenges, because we are so prepped, we are ready to manage them uh, gracefully. So thank you to all of them. And uh, Steve Butts, I see your hand is up. Yes, I just wanted to verify that was Sarah Moore who uh, seconded uh, Yes, Crystal. yep. About 20 seconds remaining on this ballot. All right, this ballot is now closing. Uh, there is a, a announcement we can now make in the King County Council District 8 race. If you could just scroll to that race. Um, so uh, no endorsement won that vote with 54.76%. So we will not be making an endorsement in that race at this time. Um, and dual endorsement received 45.2% of the vote. So there'll be no endorsement in the King County Council District 8 race. That does not preclude us from reconsidering that in the future. Um, we are now, uh, Jordan, are we ready to launch the King County? I'm sorry, the Seattle point City of, Council? Point of order. Sorry, point of order. Yes. Uh, did that vote not require a 60% majority to pass? If dual, if dual does not receive 60%, it doesn't. There's no endorsement. Okay. All right, our D1 ballot two is ready. There will be two candidates on this ballot. In order to receive the endorsement, one of the two candidates needs to receive at least 60% of the vote. Uh, no endorsement will not be an option. So you can either vote for a candidate or not vote. Um, and uh, there will be uh, opportunity for dual endorsement if this ballot does not result in an endorsement. Um, so we are ready to launch that ballot and it will be up for two minutes.
Okay, while we're waiting for the votes here, I would encourage you uh, to, to sign the petition to increase the minimum wage in Burien. Um, the 34th Democrats wholeheartedly endorsed a resolution in support of raising the minimum wage in Burien. We were happy to be at Burien Pride a couple of weekends ago to collect signatures. Um, so encourage you to uh, Google, um, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the link here, but if you can Google Fury and minimum wage petition, you should be able to find the form and sign the petition. Um, and you can find the resolution supporting it on our website, 34dems.org. And this ballot will close in 10 seconds. Okay, um, Chris Porter, you have your hand raised. Oh. Can I make a further comment about the Burian minimum wage or? Oh, please do. I think we- I'll make it short Actually, we, we are done with, I think we're waiting for results right now. So why don't we move to go to the order? This will be our go to the order period. Okay, this great. is for those of you that are new to the 34th Dems, this is an opportunity to share about community events, uh, 34th related policy initiatives, um, brief updates, uh, not a time to endorse or talk about candidates or uh, particular levies, et cetera. Um, so uh, Chris, go ahead, go to the order. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just can't emphasize enough that the Burian minimum wage, uh, although a drastic improvement particularly if it passed in the lives of many who are struggling to make ends meet in any city, let alone Burien, that's paying under this, um, still does not meet the livable wage standard. It is better than nothing. It is a step in the right direction. And more importantly, it is wholly consistent with our um, strong stance on social justice, equity, <clears throat> and trying to improve the lives of others where, through a vote. And in this case, it's going out there and supporting and signing that petition for that minimum wage. So um, just that it, key, it is strongly within the values of the 34th. Thanks. Uh, the chair will now recognize anyone else that has a good of the order to the chair. Please use the raise hand feature to be recognized. Any other good of the orders? Nothing fun happening out there. Okay. Wait a minute. Sure, sure. I, 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 yeah, uh, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, um, we are going to be at uh, at, at, Burian, at the Burian Strawberry Festival uh, this, this weekend, right? Saturday and Sunday. Um, so we're going to be thirty fourth and the thirty third. We'll be we'll be sharing a, a, a spot in that. And so um, come on, out, come out and help if you if you have the time, um, or just stop by and say hi. Thank you, Steve. Uh, the chair recognizes Deb Barker. Um, speaking of fun things that the 34th District Democrats are going to participate in this Sunday, June 18th, which happens to be Father's Day, from 1 to 4 p.m. is the Morgan Junction Community Festival, and the 34th District Democrats are going to be uh, one of the tables out uh, in the Morgan Junction Park. We have three acts. Um, it's going to be small and fun and swell and come on out and say hi to all your 34th District Democrat friends and enjoy Morgan Junction. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'll recognize Kelsey Vanhee. Thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to promote the Seattle Trans and Non-Binary Choral Ensemble, who's having a concert Friday and Saturday at the Rainier Presbyterian Church. Their um, name is Stance, S-T-A-N-C-E, -E, and you can Google them for tickets. Uh, the founder of the choir is a, a dear friend and a, a good Democrat, and she's been receiving a lot of death threats recently, and so we really want the community to show up and show some love for 
our trans and non-binary community. Thanks. Thank you, Kelsey. Uh, the chair now recognizes Carla Rogers for Good of the Order. Hey, everyone. Just wanted to promote our pop-up social this month. Uh, we will be at the bridge, which is uh, near the Morgan Junction. And it is going to be Friday, the 23rd, starting at 530. And I hope to see you there. Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes Hugo Garcia. Hi, at 34. Uh, district just wanted to say I wanted to share with you news that a stalwart of our community, a leader in the 34th district, uh, particularly in the unincorporated King County White Center community, has just recently announced that they're stepping down uh, from the White Center Community Development Association. And I just wanted to uh, share uh, congratulations and, and appreciation for having led uh, this organization and the community that has needed the most support over the last 30, 40 years, but she's been there since uh, the 90s, uh, committed to the community here and just uh, very, very fortunate to have not just lived alongside of her, but just to collaborate with her. I, mean, I think it's one of the uh, strongest leaders that's come out of the 34th district that's community led. Um, she is going to be moving to a state CDA for the Simone community, but just wanted to call out for Seely from the community, from the White Center Community Association as an appreciation for her work to White Center. Yeah. All right, seeing no other hands up, that closes our good of the order. Thank you for all for sharing. Um, sounds like some really important community updates and events coming up, so appreciate that. Um, I am now able to announce the results of the Burien City Council position for uh, vote. Uh, Patricia Hudson received 39.3%. Uh, Daniel Martin received 6.7%, and Kevin Schilling received 44.9%. No endorsement received 8, well, 9%. Uh, we will, I believe we have a second ballot ready for the top two vote getters, which are Patricia Hudson and Kevin Schilling. Again, there is no, uh, the no endorsement option is not available for this vote. Uh, Jordan, are we ready to launch that ballot? All right, we are ready to launch that ballot. So it is launched. You have two minutes to vote. Um, if neither candidate gets 60%, we will consider a motion for dual endorsement. While we're voting, uh, just one more announcement. Uh, this is, uh, how do we get out the vote for these candidates? Uh, well, our precinct committee officers are really an important part of that. Uh, this role is vital. Um, you can be an elected PCO or appointed. Um, so if there's no PCO currently in your neighborhood, you could be appointed to that position. Um, I encourage you to uh, reach out. Uh, if you're interested, go to our website. Uh, there's a whole button you can push to become a PCO. Again, it's an elected position. Uh, a lot of the folks running today started out or are currently PCOs. Um, many of our elected officials are currently PCOs. Um, you have some really critical responsibilities uh, and you help represent our democratic values and help get out the vote, which is absolutely vital. So please become a PCO. We need more, particularly in our communities of Georgetown, Soto, and Pioneer Square. Um, so please become a PCO. Um, but also we have definitely a lot of open spots in Vashon, Urian, and uh, West Seattle as well. All right, this ballot will be open for uh, about another 30 seconds or so. All right, this ballot is now closed for Burien City Council position four. Um, uh, we have no more races to consider. However, we will be announcing the results and may have additional ballots for Seattle City Council District One. Um, we still have to announce 
Burien City Council position six, and also the results from this second ballot for Burien's, Burien City Council position four. But we'll take a brief pause and commercial break uh, while we tally the votes and uh, are able to share results. So stay tuned. Okay, and we're back. Um, we have a uh, endorsement to announce. Um, Crystal Marks has won our endorsement for Burien City Council position six. Uh, she received 85.4% of the vote. No endorsement received 14.6% uh, of the vote. Uh, so still a couple more races to come and we'll announce those as soon as we are able to validate all of the votes are legitimate. Please don't forget, we have our fundraiser coming up on uh, Saturday, July 22nd at 5 p.m. That is the same day as the West Seattle Grand Parade, and that's why our theme is Keep On Marching. Um, and you can march right from the parade to the fundraiser uh, and enjoy a good company with our endorsed candidates, our candidates that may still be vying for endorsement, and elected officials. So hope to see you there. Um, please purchase your tickets. You can use the QR, QR code on the screen as well as the link. Um, uh, you can purchase a ticket or better yet, purchase a sponsorship and get some recognition uh, for your incredible contributions to supporting local Democrats. And uh, you get to come to a special uh, event, pre-event. Um, uh, so hope to see you all there.
for the chair recognizes Mary. I can't see the full last name. Mary McDonough. Give your hand up. If you're speaking, we cannot hear you. You may have to unmute. I'm going to lower the hand. I'm going to assume that was an error. Oh, fine. Are you going to lay this? Uh, judge, uh, can you see me? So just a reminder, um, we're waiting on two races. One is the Seattle City Council D1 race in there. Uh, we're many votes in that race and we are just validating that they're all legitimate votes. Um, so we can confirm that the results are accurate. Uh, if, if, that, if no candidate in that race receives 60% of the vote, we will consider a motion for dual endorsement. Um, we are also still waiting for the results for the second ballot of Burien City Council position four. Same thing with that. If neither candidate receives 60% of the vote, we will go to consider a dual endorsement.
and it's supposed to be done just a manual. Um, the, okay, we're gonna, um, the chair now recognizes, uh, Gina, well, we need to create, uh, Gina, hold your thought. I'm going to recognize you in a minute. You texted me, uh, for yeah, a point of order, but, um, yeah, go ahead. Could you actually recognize, I think Dow Constantine's in the meeting? Okay, yes, I just need to, um, we need to make a ballot for that. Um, but uh, I do have an announcement to make. Um, 
So uh, for Burien City Council position four, uh, we have no candidate has received the endorsement uh, in on the second ballot. So uh, Patricia Hudson received 45.8% of the vote and Kevin Schilling received 54% of the vote. Uh, I will consider a motion for dual endorsement. Uh, Chris Porter, the chair recognizes Chris Porter. Um, I move for a no dual endorsement. That's not out of that's, that's out of not. Order. Oh, you can only do the okay. Yes. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, is there a motion for dual endorsement? Is there a motion for dual endorsement? One last time. Is there a motion for dual endorsement? I, I so move. Steve, Steve Butts. Butts make, has made a motion. Is there a second? Ted Barker, ha, Chair recognizes Ted Barker. I second the motion. Okay. Uh, okay, the motion is now on the table for a dual endorsement for Burien City Council position four. The chair recognizes Steve Butts for two minutes and Chris Porter, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can reshare your timer for that ballot. Yeah. For that speech, so Steve, oh, you have two minutes. Uh, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say. I, I just, I just think that you know we, we should, um, you know, recognize both of the candidates and um, uh, as such. And so I'm, I'm uh, that, that, that's, that's all I have to say, really. Are there any speeches? Could the chair recognizes Chris Porter for a speech against you. You have your own two minutes on the timer. Thank you, Chair. I uh, cannot emphasize enough um, the message we send when we give our endorsements. We've just about always given them solidly to one strong candidate. These candidates just seem so close, but some work obviously needs to be done. And maybe we can all coalesce behind uh, one of the other candidates when we meet again uh, con to consider candidates for um, endorsement in our general election. But it's clear uh, <clears throat> that when we speak and we speak in a unif uniform, unified body, it carries weight, it resonates, and other LDs want to know, what did the 34th do? So let's keep with that tradition, and I recommend a do not, a no a dual endorsement. Thank you. Are there, uh, the chair now recognizes Ted Barker to speak in favor of the motion. Thank you. Um, we have as a body. Chris, the timer needs sure. to start. Sorry. Uh, pause. Okay. Uh, yep, there you go. Thank you. Um, we have as a body done our fair share of dual endorsements. So I, I think that That's what we have. we're not really breaking tradition here to do that. And as we've discussed internally, people in this call may not know this, is there are things that the candidates get. They get access to the to, um, the NGP, the vote builder, uh, these, you know, walk lists and this voter information. And I think that giving these candidates, both of which we have, you know, some affinity for access to this information has merit and lets them do a better campaign and reach candidate, you know, reach voters that are most interested. So I think we should do the dual endorsement and allow them to um, get the benefits of what we can offer uh, as an LD. Thank you. Thank you. Are there is there one more speech against the dual endorsement? Another speech against dual endorsement? Any hands up? The chair recognizes Carla Rogers. Um, thank you, Graham. I I just want to reiterate what uh, Chris said earlier when we were talking about um, dual endorsing for the King County Council position. It does send a mis mixed message. It does create confusion. Um, I agree that um, you know us as a district not endorsing either candidate 
is odd and does not allow us to do what we like to do best. But I also think it there's a balance there of negative. So I would speak against um, a dual endorsement. Thank you. All right, speeches are now closed. Um, we will now launch the ballot for, are we ready, Jordan, for that particular ballot? <clears throat> All right, so that ballot is launched is now open for two minutes. Um, after this uh, ballot is closed, the chair will recognize uh, for a, a point of order. So so hold on and uh, and we'll give ourselves a minute and a half. Okay, about a minute, 20 seconds. Okay, this poll is now closed. Um, we do have a point of order to consider. Uh, so I'm going to, the chair now recognizes King County Executive Dow Constantine. And first we have to make a motion to change the agenda and then we can make a motion on the thing I think you want to talk about. Correct. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move that the agenda be amended to allow consideration of an endorsement of King County Proposition 1, the Veterans, Seniors, and Human Services Levy. My understanding is this requires an 80% vote uh, for us to be able to take the matter up. That's correct. Thank you. Is there a second? Deb Barker, I second the motion. Deb Barker seconds the motion. Uh, the chair will now recognize Dow Constantine again uh, for two minutes to speak for changing the agenda. I'll be very brief. Uh, because ballots drop on July 12th, if the 34th is to endorse the levy, it would be most valuable to do it now so that the 34th can be included along with other democratic organizations in the materials that are sent to voters. Uh, I would encourage your support. Thank you. Are there any speeches against the motion to change the agenda to consider a motion for Proposition 1? 
any speeches against? Any speeches against? Okay, we'll now launch a quick ballot. Uh, two minutes to consider uh, changing the agenda. It, this requires an 80% vote uh, and we will quickly get those results. Yeah, I was, okay, we're gonna launch that ballot. This is amend, right? This is to amend the agenda, yes. Okay, two minutes to vote. <clears throat> Do you kind of think that Constantine right now has put up like a phone still in your thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the ballot the ballot passes with eighty nine percent of the vote. So the uh, agenda has been amended. We will now consider a motion. Uh, the chair recognizes King County Executive Dow Constantine. Mr. Chair, I move that the 34th District Democrats endorse um, King County Proposition 1, the Veterans, Seniors, and Human Services Levy. All right, is there a second? The, the chair recognizes Chris Porter. Chris Porter, I second the motion. All right, the motion is now on the table. The chair recognizes King County Executive Dow Constantine to speak uh, thank for the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair, minutes. again, uh, attempting to be as efficient as possible. The veterans levy has been approved three times by the voters of King County. Uh, the last time in 2017, this is a straight renewal of that levy, 10 cents per thousand dollars valuation. Over the course of the last five years, it has contributed to a 40% reduction in veterans homelessness. It has supported 39 senior centers around the county, and it is um, provided for services for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and many others in need. Uh, this levy renewal is critical to us continuing to provide support for those in our community who need it most and is our duty to our veterans, uh, those who have served our country uh, uh, for whom we need to provide uh, help now to reintegrate into civilian life. Uh, your support will be important now, the 33rd District endorsed uh, this past week, and it would be great to add the 34th as we go out to communicate with the voters. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any speeches against the motion? Please use the raise hand feature if you would like to speak against the motion. Any speeches against the motion? All right, speeches are now closed on this motion. Uh, the options, this is going to be different, folks, from what you experienced previously. The options will be to either support the motion, reject the motion, or take no position. Um, so those of you who were looking for an abstain earlier, here's your chance. Um, if any choice receives 60% of the vote, that choice is endorsed. If no choice receives 60% of the uh, 
If no choice receives 60% of the vote, the two with the most votes shall advance to a second ballot. Um, so are we ready to, uh, Carla, release that ballot for the motion? Okay. Then that'll be released uh, for two minutes. And after that, we can announce some results. Oh I'm sorry, this ballot is uh, invalid. It doesn't have the requisite choices. The choices are support, reject, or no position. I apologize. Uh, we were developing this on the fly. So um, please hold while we correct the ballot. This ballot is spoiled. We will try again. Fuck a duck. Uh, I'm worried for that duck, but um, we're going to get this ballot up. People may want to check to make sure their mic isn't on. <laughs> I thought my mic was on because I said something about a duck. And I have a feeling there's a lot of people watching the Mariners game right now as they're uh, attending this meeting. Okay, we're going to launch this again. Duck or no duck. Here we go. Support, reject, or no position. So Ted, what's the score? Four to one. Suarez just mi hit, missed hitting a grand slam that would have tied the game in the bottom of the ninth. That's where the duck got it. Okay, the, the, so uh, just an update, the Seattle City Council District 1 race is, is tight, so we are still uh, confirming votes for that. Um, we will have another race to announce in a moment. Okay, we're going to share some results quickly here. We have all three open ballots finalized. Um, for the uh, 34th District, Democrats should endorse the Veterans and Seniors and Human Services levy. Uh, that has been endorsed by 91% of the vote. So that's awesome. Uh, we are excited to uh, be proponents and, and support getting the vote out for that on the August 1st primary ballot. Um, I now can announce Burien City Council position four. Again, the options were dual endorsement or no endorsement. And uh, dual endorsement did not receive the necessary 60% vote. Uh, it was 54.44%. No endorsement was 45, I'm sorry, 45.6%, so no endorsement there. And uh, Jordan, if you could scroll up so I can see the D1 
results. Okay, so we have uh, a candidate to announce for the Seattle City Council District 1 endorsement. Um, Rob Saka has won the 34th District Democrats sole endorsement uh, with 63.71% of the vote. That's 63%. 63.71%. Uh, Marin Costa received 39.3% of the vote. So congratulations to uh, Rob Saka. Uh, you are our candidate for Seattle City Council District 1, and we will be out there working for your campaign. And as if there is a finally, our next board meeting is scheduled for June 21st at 7 p.m. You can contact me for details. Our next membership meeting is on July 21st with a pre-meeting program at 6.30 p.m. Now, if there's no further business and there's no objection, the meeting will be adjourned. Any objection? All right, there being no objection, the June meeting is adjourned at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Nice. Good night and see you next month. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs>